Hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA tutorial. Uh, so last tutorial was, it should have been pretty fun for those of you who didn't know how to handle screen scrolling already. And this tutorial is going to be a, a bit more fun in my opinion uh, than the last tutorial. And what we're going to be doing is building upon the last tutorial. So what you're going to want to do is get your code from last tutorial uh yeah so let us get started so what are we going to be doing this tutorial this tutorial we're going to be using viewports in order to actually make a split screen game so uh split screen games are, are everywhere they're really cool it's really cool to play a game with a friend uh playing single games by itself is always is fun but playing a game with with a with a friend or something can give you a, a whole other experience that uh single player games can't give you right so sometimes you might want to incorporate uh two players or whatever like maybe if you're making a platformer game and you want to have two players or you want to see or you're doing like a tag game or something you want to have a split screen or or you want to have a race to see who gets where when uh, first or whatever then you can do so with split screens uh, so you can handle this uh, like for languages like uh, like grown stuff they don't have built-in viewports and stuff or uh, did I say language I meant APIs uh, but there is ways to handle it without using uh, viewports but viewports since C sharp and XNA incorporates them then might as well use them because they make your life so much easier okay so let us uh, get into the code uh, so the way viewports are gonna work is that uh, what the player, the first player is gonna take off one, take the left half of the screen, and the second player is gonna control the right half of the screen. And what we're gonna essentially do with each view is that the first view is going to uh, draw the first player, and the second view is gonna draw the second player. Okay. No, no, with the second view, no, both of the views are going to draw both players, sorry, but uh, the, f the first view is going to follow the first player, and the second view is going to follow the second player, so therefore, uh, it's just like both of you guys are on the same map, but you guys are viewing different portions depending on where you are, etc, etc, and if you want it so that like uh player one is on a different level or or player two is on a different level depending on uh whether they're playing the game or you want them to be you don't want them to be on the same map etc etc then you don't have to draw this the player on on you don't have to draw the both players on each viewport you could draw one player in one viewport and the next player in the other viewport it's up to you how you want to handle it uh but this is the way i'm doing in this tutorial so first of all, what you should note is that uh, in the player class, I created two keys, I mean four keys, sorry, up, down, left, and right. And in the, I made a constructor in the player class that takes four, uh, four parameters, one up, down, left, and right, and I just set the values up, down, left, and right, right, my, my variables. And then in the update method, I say that uh, if they press the down key, then this will happen. If they press the up key, right and left, okay? And we do this because we want to specify different directional buttons for the left, uh, the first player and the second player. So if we go to game1.cs, uh, we're going to need two player classes and two camera classes, right? Uh, one uh, one camera to follow one player and another camera to follow the next player so we can easily just make uh two players we can say player um player one and then we can make a player two etc etc um but might as well make an array of it so i made an array i set the array to two uh, i have two elements and i put in a new player i specify the directional buttons for the first player and I put a comma and specif specify the directional buttons for the second player upon initialization. And for the camera, I just set it to uh, two camera cameras and I create the two camera instances uh, right there. So in the initialize, I use a for each loop to cycle through each one of the players and I initialize each of the players. Now we're going to go back up to the top of the code again and uh, we create we have a viewport now the default view is going to be the whole window like uh, what, what we're going to see in the whole window uh the player one viewport is going to be what we see on the player one's window and the player two viewport is going to want to see what we see on the uh the second player's uh view okay and i have a texture 2d di uh, divider which is going to be a line that will divide our two screens so we can 
clearly see whose player want what player one can see what player two can see uh so right now we to set the views all the views are going to be equal to the default view so we do this default view is equal to player one view is equal to player two view is equal to graphics device that viewport so all of them acquire the viewport so our player ones uh the the first the player one's view and the player's two views with is going to be equal to the and now it doesn't matter which one you could do you could do player two views with or anything uh, since they're all the same but just so you don't get confused so it's going to be equal to the default views width divided by two since they both took off half of the screen so it's basically saying the width of each of these is equal to the screen width divided by two that's what this is saying and then since uh both since the player two views on the right hand side of the screen then we have to set the x coordinate equal to the f the full screen divided by two so we'll start off from the center of the screen and draw it towards the end of the screen okay and the player one view will start from coordinate zero and draw it to the halfway point of the screen so for our load content we have another four each and we load the content from each player for the divider we load our divider image and everything remains the same so for our update method uh this is how we're going to do it so we have we're going to have a for loop that will is the length of the player and since the player and camera have the same amount of elements we just increment it by one and we do player i dot update we update the game and then we do camera i dot update and we update the current player uh's position simple enough so once we go to the draw, uh, all this stuff seems a bit different. But first of all, we want to go down to the bottom and create a method called draw scene. It's going to take three things in the parameters. It's going to take the both of the players, uh, the current camera that we're going to be using for uh, that player that we're controlling, and the game time which is needed by for player dot draw for the player's movement. Okay, so we do spray bash dot begin and you can cop you can cut this or cut this and paste this right here from the last tutorial. It was up here but you can paste it in here and it's the same as last tutorial. Uh so we do the spray bash begin, we have our spray bash end. Within it we have our background that we had in last tutorial. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our for each um and uh cycle through each of the players and draw each player individually okay uh so why this is why this is needed is because first camera our first camera is going to follow the first player and when we call draw scene again we're going to put in our second camera which is going to follow the second player so we're drawing both players to the screen in each viewport but one is centralized on one player so if we go to our draw method what we do is we set our graphics device dot viewport into our player one view so now we're focused on the the first viewport so we do draw scene, okay, and we're drawing the scene to this viewport right here, okay, to the to the first viewport, and then we put in our players, both of our players, the camera zero, which is representing the first player, and the game time in there. Then we re we set the, the viewport equal to player view number two, so we're focusing on the second player, okay, now. So we're like focusing on the second viewport. We do draw scene, we're drawing both players, but we set camera to one this time, so we're following the second player, okay. And then we set that to game time. And then, last but not least, we do graphics.viewport.default view, and then we just uh, do sprite batch begin, and, sprite ba and then we draw our divider. Uh, equal to the screen width divided by two, and then we do color white. The reason why I have subtract one is that the width of my divider is equal to three pixels. So for the actual center, the divider to be in the center of the screen, then we do the screen width divided by two subtract one, and then we end it. The reason why we draw the divider here is that we don't want our divider to scroll. That's why we have it in a different sprite batch dot begin, so it's not affected relative to our camera's position. So if I was to run this program, everything should run efficiently. So if I p drag this into view, uh, this is going to be our this is our first player on the left and our second player on the right. So as you can see, we have both players, and if you look at both views, uh, everything remains the same. But if you notice, uh, the first view is following the player, but in the second view, the is is locating on the 
the second player. So it looks as though the player is off the screen based on the player 2's view. So if I go up right here, on the player's two view, the player is gone because according to the player's two view, we can't the player two's view, we can't see the player anymore. But in the player one's view, it's centerized on the player, right? So everything moves accordingly, and then you see the player again. As for the second player's viewport, if we look at it right here, if we move the player down, then we can it's centerized on the player, and when we move it everything moves accordingly so the second viewport follows the second player the first viewport follows the first player and therefore yeah you got two different viewports so that is it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye